two, one. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to OCVarsity.com for a Gridiron Show special. We're going to talk about the top ten. Steve Fryer here with Dan Albano and Carlos Arias. Okay, here's what's going on. I'm confused about who's number one. I'm confused who's next to me. And here's why we're confused, because Michigan had been number two all, all year behind Santa Margarita, number two all year for seven weeks. And here what happens last week, modern day, which we had at number three, beat Santa Margarita. So what do you do? Do you bump Mission Viejo from number two to number one? Or because modern day, just down there at number three, they beat the number one team. So do they leapfrog Mission Viejo because they beat the number one team? Carlos, I know you like to say to be the champ, you got to beat the champ and all that sort of thing. So I imagine, Carlos, with that mindset of yours, to be number one, you got to beat number one. You had to vote it for modern day as number one. I can't believe I went against my rule of Ric Flair. To be the man, you got to beat the man. And, you know, modern day beat the man. But I'm, I'm going with Mission Viejo. I really uh, like this team. Uh, they got incredible offense. Their defense is spectacular. It's just too much. I think, I think they have to be number one. Yeah, I went with Mission Viejo, too, because uh, I think if they played modern day, they, they'd probably beat them. And that's kind of the thing that I always look at. I think their, their offensive skills, uh, great playmakers, you know, with Sushek and Monster and all these great guys. Their defense is nails as well. Max Redfield, you know, gosh, is there a better football player in the county? Maybe not. Maybe so, Thomas Duarte. Yeah, maybe Tommy Duarte looked pretty good. Yeah, we, we saw that last, last week. Uh, he had another great game against Margarita. But, uh, Dan, so who did you vote for uh, number one this week? Did you go with Mission or did you go with Modern Day? You know, Coach uh, Bob Johnson swirling around these uh, practice parts right now. But, uh, you know, I picked uh, Modern Day. Yeah. And I, I'm kind of stunned um, that, you know, uh, Mission's number one. I mean, I, I haven't been voting them even number two. Uh, my number two uh, this week was Edison. I could see Mission Viejo becoming number one if they were to impress in the rest of the South Coast League uh, season, impress against Tesoro and El Toro, but I just think modern days earned it. Uh, I, I like their resume more. Their strength of schedule now um, is, I think, is superior. You know, the modern day goes on the road at Narbonne, loses one point to a state powerhouse. They beat a real good Edison team that's got a uh, good defense. You know, obviously they played well against Santa Margarita. You know, and I think when it comes to Mission Viejo, some of my friends, uh, emailing friends from Mission Viejo and on Twitter from Mission Viejo, they keep telling me, hey, you know, Santiago Corona, those Sharks, they're pretty good. And this Mission Hills team down in San Diego, they're pretty good. You know, and what I want to see is I want to see, you know, powerhouse, uh, you know, non-league games from Mission Viejo. And uh, they're getting to that schedule now, so we're going to find out. And uh, I know they're plenty talented, but right now I wouldn't rank them number one. I don't think they've earned it quite yet, but they're going to have their opportunities and give us voters some more to think about. But I just think modern day, you know, uh, and I, I, of course, I like serve, I like uh, Edison's uh, strength of schedule yeah. too. And I think you look at strength of schedule for Mission Viejo against these other state powerhouses, it's probably the lowest. So, um, you know, but, you know, Mission Viejo, um, and then maybe they spoiled us over the years. They always played such a great non-league schedule. In my opinion, this isn't one of theirs. You know, they've played De La Salle and Long Beach Poly and, you know, way back, you know, modern day. So, When did you become a strength of schedule guy? You know, I mean, I'm always a strength of schedule guy. I just think, but you, and it depends on how you do. I, I didn't like strength of schedule for Servite when you, uh, when they were getting, they were hanging around in the top 10 when they're not, they have a strength of schedule, but they don't do anything. They lose game after game. It's not like they have, you know, uh, what modern, the production that modern day had. So that's, what, that's the difference for me. All right, very good. You know, you mentioned the San Diego Corona Sharks, and when you said the word shark, I was thinking about, you're talking about Bob Johnson kind of circling around here, you know, looking at us and things like that. And, you know, something we talked to uh, Coach Johnson about earlier, earlier today before we got on here was about transfers. Uh, you know, they've had a couple good ones come in here. And a couple. That's, I mean, you can watch a play where it's the Orange Lutheran transfer throwing to the Santa Margarita transfer being blocked by the Santa Margarita transfer. And that's what bothers Coach Johnson. We always refer to these guys as Alex Suchez, comma, the transfer from Santa Margarita, Ian Fieber, comma, the transfer from Orange Lutheran. At what point do you guys, do we no longer, you know, have to refer to these guys as the transfer from this school, that school? Coach Johnson, what do you think about that? I think if you can find a school that doesn't have transfers coming in this day and age, I, uh, I'll bet some big money that there isn't one. So we seem to get the ink. In fact, we can't get an article written without the guy being a transfer. I don't know when that ends, uh, yeah. you know, but certainly it should end after maybe saying so-and-so transferred to a school, in my opinion, because everybody else gets as many as we get or more. Um, so I guess it's just the time of the, the, the time of the times. And certainly have to have to live here to, to transfer here. Yeah. You can't move around. So 
you have to move in and, and reside in our district. So enough said on that, but uh, we enjoy uh, anybody that's here and hopefully the kids having a good time. Uh, and we're proud of those guys. So I, I hope we just uh, keep playing the way we're playing. Well, you know, Coach Johnson, I think that's a real good point about these young people about, you know, when do we just identify them as Mish Viejo guys? You know, is it week four or week five? I mean, I don't know when it happens, but, you know, my, you know, my sort of take on this, Dan, is that uh, if we don't write that this kid transferred from Orange Lutheran or Santa Margarita or from Jones High or whatever, you know, I think people read it and go, hey, isn't this the guy who, you know, and we're supposed to answer readers' questions, sort of anticipate them. I know if I was a dad and I, and I kept you know, hearing guys refer to us, he came from this school and that school, stuff like that, I'd probably get tired of it too. But I think as a, to our readership, we kind of owe them some background, some explanation of exactly what's going on. Totally, totally understand, totally get Coach Johnson's angle, and I hope, hope that other people can understand ours. What do you think? Well, you know, I can understand where Coach is coming from, and sure. where, you know, we've talked to lots of parents of transfers and a lot of coaches that have lost players. Uh, and coaches that have gained players and, you know, team, you know, the, 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 the reality about transfers is they are impactful. They impact programs that they leave. They impact programs they go to. And we're talking about really good players. And, um, you know, uh, I, don't think we, I, I don't think we do it uh, to ruffle any feathers. Uh, we're just reporting what's happening, trying to keep track of the players. It's challenging for sports writers. Um, so, and it's challenging for, uh, you know, fans to follow it too. So I don't think we, you know, do it to, to uh, you know, beat a dead horse. Yeah. You know, I think we, uh, you know, it's 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 a fact, and I think it's certainly in play. Uh, you know, it could be a season or two seasons, or you know, and uh, you know, for some time. Yeah, yeah, but you know, and I, but I totally get what what Coach is saying about, you know, eventually, can we just refer to these guys as he's Joe Smith from Jones High? I, I totally get where he's coming from. Yeah, you know, and these players are following the rules. They got these new transfer rules in there. And so these, these kind of transfers are going to happen all over the place. I'm anticipating tons in basketball. So, uh, you know, this is just part of the reality of us trying to report and them, you know, dealing with their situations. And Mission has gotten a lot of transfers over the years, and they probably will continue to do so. They're an attractive program. They attract players. But I also can see that Mission Viejo doesn't like the uh, teams that get a lot of transfers, don't like the scrutiny that yeah. it brings. They don't like the label. They, uh, But that's just the... Uh, you know, and that's them trying to uh, spin it the however they want to. Um, but that's, you know, that's the reality is, is how people are talking about it. And, you know, when kids leave high profile programs and they're really good players, you know, sorry, coach, people are going to talk about it. You know, you know, young people do change their minds. And, you know, uh, Max Redfield, he might be changing his. He committed to USC, but he just got back from a visit to Notre Dame. How'd that visit go, Max Redfield? Well, I had a great weekend at Notre Dame, as, yeah. as you heard. And, um, it's just a lot to think about, so it's going to be a tough decision. Um, every both both programs have really really great education and um, athletics as well, so it's going to be it's going to be a tough choice. Okay, thanks Max Redfield, thanks Bob Johnson, and thank all the Diablos for hosting us here for the OC Varsity Great Iron Show at ocvarsity.com, where we've got you covered.